So today we speak about the inner revolution. Awakening is revolutionary. It's revolutionary because it collapses all psychological structures that uphold the myopic egoic perspective. Myopic because the ego sees in terms of me and mine. And in order to see in terms of me and mine, it has to be rooted erroneously, but nevertheless rooted in a core belief of me as a separate entity, as me as a form existing amongst many other forms. And I have to fight for my survival amongst that sea of forms. Some forms I agree with and some forms I disagree with. And when I say forms, I mean all forms, the forms of other people, the forms of our own thoughts, feelings, other people's thoughts, feelings. Everything that we experience in the world of form. Let me just backtrack a little bit. When I say awakening, awakening is revolutionary. I'm not talking about awakening as an awakening experience, as a satori or as a some kind of spiritual high or even a spiritual insight or any momentary or short lasting or even long lasting but nevertheless temporary feeling or experience of expandedness, of oneness, of connectedness, of peacefulness that then returns back to a sense of perhaps fear or anxiety or despondency or uncertainty or poor meanness, yeah? I'm talking about awakening as the truly revolutionary shift in consciousness when all internal psychological structures collapse that previously upheld me as a separate entity, me as a thing, a body, a person, a personality, an entity of some kind in which I am separated from other forms by space. <laughs> and those other forms are either in agreement with me or in opposition to me. I either like them or dislike them. I either want them or don't want them. And with that comes the seeking of happiness, fulfillment, peace, love, from the attempt to possess, take ownership of, create more of, manifest more of those forms I like, I want, I hold up as more valuable to me than the others. 
And again, those forms may be people that appear in our lives or things, possessions, material things, achievements, or the forms of our own thoughts and feelings in which we uphold or hold up positive thoughts, nice feelings, spiritual feelings as more valuable to me than the ones that I don't like, that are unwelcome, that I have labeled as not good enough, not valuable enough, not wanted, not welcomed, too difficult, unbearable, and so on. Awakening, true awakening, is the end of that mechanism of seeking fulfillment for me, yeah, seeking my happiness, seeking my peace, yeah, and so on, from the world of form, external form or internal form. It's the end. With that end comes the collapse of a fundamental core belief of separation. That is radical. That is revolutionary. It changes everything. It changes your perspective. It changes your perception. You no longer come from a place of belief. All beliefs are deconstructed. The primary unexamined belief is that I am this, this body, this personality, this yeah, this separate entity. When all beliefs are deconstructed, yeah, they collapse. That doesn't mean that we meet life from ignorance or from stupidity or from childishness. It means we no longer have to defend our position. We no longer have to defend that belief, which is either a conscious belief, yeah, we, we're aware of it, it becomes a thought, or it's an unconscious belief. We're not aware of it, and yet it drives the seeking mechanism it drives what we seek and where we seek it from and the addictive process of that seeking, which always is at the root of suffering, psychological suffering, because to be driven by that unconscious seeking mechanism, the mechanism that seeks fulfillment from the world of form, out of form or inner form, always comes to dissatisfaction always comes to unfulfillment because what we're seeking is not real what we're seeking is not the resolution it is only a figment of our imagination so there is only temporary satisfaction temporary relief and then we come back to a sense of dissatisfaction a sense of lack of fulfillment and the yearning for seeking something more. So that's not the answer. When we're driven by that unconsciousness, that addictive mechanism, then a, some of our beliefs that are driving that, the belief that we are separate, that we are not enough, that I am not loved enough, not happy enough, not peaceful enough, that I am just not enough and therefore am I find something to make me enough because underneath that I am a separate thing born into this world and I have to fight for my survival. I have to fight for my happiness. Yes, I have to find it. I have to seek it. I have to grab it. I have to own it. I have to possess it. When that belief is unconscious, 
we have to defend that position. Hmm? We either defend it on the surface by defending our thoughts, our opinions, our intellectual beliefs, or we defend it unconsciously underneath the surface in that we defend ourselves. We protect ourselves. We don't protect ourselves in a healthy way, in a wholesome way. We defend and protect ourselves in a way that is that cre and in a way that creates further division and separation within and usually without <laughs> yeah? but within yeah when we need to defend our core belief in separation than anything that arises in consciousness that seems to be in opposition to that, we create an enemy out of. That's the root of inner division. Awakening is the end of all that. When awakening goes down all the way from a mind realization to a heart surrender to falling into the depth of openness, open silence at the core of being, then all those structures, internal structures, come tumbling down. That's revolutionary. Yeah, the internal revolution has begun. It's the end of inner division. It's the end of inner violence. You're no longer violent towards feelings that arise. Everything is welcome. There's no more division into good feelings or bad feelings. And the paradox is when there is a non-judgment, when there is an equanimity, when there is a gentleness towards all that arises, all feelings that arise, all experiences that arise in consciousness, in you, the paradox is that there's no more fight against it. And when there's no more fight against it, Gentleness, kindness, tenderness, and peace become the bedrock of who you are. Yeah. <clears throat> so very often when I speak of the end of separation, and we often equate the end of separation with oneness. <laughs> so then this idea of oneness is taken and it's often, um, often interpreted as being in agreement with everyone, everyone thinking the same way everyone being like-minded, everyone being spiritually awakened in the same way. And then that creates a kind of homogenous oneness. That's very appealing to some part of us, to the mind, to the imagination. But really the end of separation and the true meaning of oneness, which might be a misleading word, but the true meaning of the end of separation is the end of the division in you in which your experience, your internal experience, your internal landscape is made an enemy. There is a hardness towards it, a violence towards it, a rejection. Mm -hmm. So the end of separation is a state of surrender. 
an inner surrender, an inner softness, an inner openness to what is here. And what is here as this openness means that you can listen. And I've said this before and I say it again, but it's really important. When we listen from inner openness, then we can hear, then we can listen to a deeper intelligence that guides us. that has nothing to do with the surface of liking everything or liking everyone or agreeing with everyone or agreeing with everything. <laughs> because things in the world, in, in, in the sense of uh, other people, circumstances, events, happenings, thoughts and feelings, your own and others, will always arise. Yeah, they're always the waves on the surface are moving, are emerging, you cannot stop that. And you don't need to be in agreement with it all. You don't need to like it all. The invitation is to meet it all, not from the surface, but from the deep, from the depth. And in that depth, there is an open awareness, an open silence. There is a spaciousness that is innately kind, innately tender. It has no need to reject anything. Awakening, when it filters all the way, means that we no longer meet our experience from the surface. The surface, there is seeming duality seeming division, seeming separation. There are separate waves. Awakening is revolutionary because you meet your experience with freshness, yeah? With openness. There is no division in that. It's an innocent, naked meeting of what is here, what is here, what is here. That fundamentally changes everything. It fundamentally changes how we meet our experience, how we meet our own lives, how we meet each other and how we meet the world. It doesn't happen from the top down, it happens from the inside out. And without that fundamental shift deep within, there can be no true revolution. There can be no true revolution of love in our lives or in the world. There can be no true revolution of peace in our lives or in the world. That's why there is such a personal responsibility in this. Not the responsibility to do the right thing or follow the right belief spiritually or ethically or morally, but to look within with such honesty, with such humility, to look within and see what we give our allegiance to. Do we give our allegiance to the surface, the pull of the surface? Because there is a pull. Yeah, the momentum of egoic mind is to pull us to the surface and say, look, this wave 
is like this and this wave is like that. And so we start the judgment, so we start the division, so we start the rejection. Yeah. Your responsibility is to be honest as to what you are giving your allegiance to. The pull may always be there. Hmm? Or it may not over time, but it doesn't matter. But you have a choice within as to whether you give your allegiance to that in this moment, in this moment, in this moment, or whether you choose to pause, hmm? to pause that movement. Yeah, the, the, the waves will still continue, but something in you has come to rest in the deepest. It's the, it's the willingness to surrender. The following of that movement to the surface. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Awareness, attention can move with that movement to the surface or it can just surrender itself in this now. And in that... There is a mini revolution, something collapses. The egoic structure that clenches into me, me and mine, me and my thoughts. Yeah. Me and my thoughts in response to this event or that event or this circumstance or, yeah, or this ex experience or, or this emotion. Yeah, that clenched fist can be surrendered in each moment, in each moment, in each moment when you notice it, yeah? It's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's an act, if you like, of vigilance and surrender. You surf on that razor's edge. That's the invitation of awakening until it goes all the way. And then that... Uh, Vigilance and surrender become very natural, yeah?